People who cannot remember many of the teachings of Jesus, and that includes almost everyone in the world these days, can often be jogged into remembering at least a few of his teachings if you remind them that Jesus told many famous stories or parables, the prodigal son, the good Samaritan, the sower and the seed, the lost sheep, the parable of the talents, that sort of thing. A problem with the parables, well, not a problem really, because Jesus said he did it that way deliberately, is that they are sometimes not easy to nail down in terms of what they mean. They're not really complicated, but Jesus said that he told them so that certain people would not understand what he was saying. In a couple of cases, he even interprets the parable for his disciples, and the interpretation is printed right there in the Bible, and still people seem to miss what he was saying. You see, the problem is that the parables are kind of like branches to the core teachings of Jesus. Unless you have heard and accepted the fundamental commands that he gave to his followers, you're going to miss the real message. Kind of like finding a branch on the ground and not knowing what tree it came from. This tendency to isolate one bit of truth from another has done a lot to confuse people about what it really is that Jesus was teaching in his parables. But it has also helped to keep people, some of them with a lot of authority in the religious system, printing the teachings of Jesus in Bibles that they personally rarely ever read and even more rarely ever act upon. Their ignorance has actually protected the Bible from being banned in many countries for centuries. For if the world really knew what Jesus said, they would be burning Bibles everywhere. In Rome, in Israel, even in America. Well, maybe especially in America. In this video, I'm going to give you an example of how the parables hide powerful and inflammatory truths. Well, two parables actually, but they appear next to each other in the same chapter of Matthew. The first one is a one verse parable where Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he has found one pearl of great price, he went and he sold all that he had and he bought it. The average person looks at that parable and says, okay, so Jesus is saying that whatever it is that he stands for, it's pretty nice, kind of like a beautiful pearl. That's the message. Nice guy. Nice message. Nice story. Would that be what you see it as saying? But hey, look again. Jesus is talking about someone literally selling everything he has in order to get this nice pearl. Is anyone teaching that? Sell everything you own to get this nice pearl? To see how simple it is to miss the really radical lesson hidden in a parable? And why is it missed? Isn't it because we have already missed it in the rest of his teachings? Didn't we stick our fingers in our ears when Jesus came straight out and said, Sell what you have. Give to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me. In fact, we used to try to turn the clear, simple teaching into a parable. Well, what he really meant was, and then blah, 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 with all of our talk about how it didn't mean what it actually said. Or we say something like, oh, don't worry about that one. It's only for some guy he met who had a really bad problem with greed. Not the sort of thing that you and I need to worry about today. Besides, God wants you to be rich. Jesus can literally come right out and say, anyone who does not forsake all that he owns cannot be my disciple. And the same thing will happen. Well, what he meant was and blah, 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 all over again. That's what they do, isn't it? Now, in that same chapter, Matthew records a slight variation on the story about the pearl. In this one, Jesus changes the pearl to a priceless treasure, and he gives us a little deeper understanding of why what he is saying is such good news. Listen to him. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which when a man has found it, he hides it. And for the sheer joy of it, he goes and sells all that he has, and he buys that field. What? Hey, did you just hear Jesus say, you can buy your way into heaven? Sounded like that, didn't it? But no, look again. He did not say you can buy your way into heaven. Not at all. Yes, the man sells everything that he has. Yes, he buys the field. The field, mind you. So why is this guy jumping all over the place for joy? thrilled out of his mind over what has just happened. He's racing around telling the good news to all of his neighbors. And this is the good news. 
that he got this incredible treasure worth a million times more than the field. A million times more than everything that he owns. And he got it for nothing. All he had to do was buy the field. And the treasure was his for free. Wahoo! Hallelujah! You see, this story answers the silly argument that goes on between theologians all over the world about how little you can do, or perhaps how much you can get away with, and still get into heaven. They have no idea about the incredible treasure that the kingdom of heaven represents. Their interest, well, it's in filling pews and filling offering plates and putting up bigger churches. So they haggle over the details. Come to my church and I'll let you get away with this, or with that, or with something else. I get people like that writing to me every day of the week. Dear Voice, is it a sin to do such and such? Dear Voice, if I want to follow Jesus, can I keep such and such? Can I get away with just doing it part way? Is it a sin to just love my family more than God? Does the Bible say that I have to do such and such? What's happening when people are doing that? They have missed the treasure. Look at the parable. The treasure is hidden. Did you notice that? It's hidden to the rest of the church world. And that's why they argue so much about the details. But it's not hidden to those of us who have dared to believe Jesus. We have discovered that he really did mean what he said when he told the Pharisees, if you would give even the food and your plates and your cups to the poor, you would have treasure in heaven. The masses of the world and unfortunately, that includes the masses of the churches, have never heard Jesus say to them, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Just sell what you have and give to the poor. Provide yourselves bags of wealth which will never wear out, a treasure in the heavens which will never fail, where no thief can touch it and no moth can corrupt it. Amazing, isn't it? I remember one old preacher who used to say, you don't have to do anything to get to heaven except be in the right place when God's handing out the free tickets. The problem, of course, is getting people to go stand in that right place. I think it was the same preacher who would use another metaphor about the good news being like water. He would say, I'm under the spout where the glory comes out. Well, that's exactly what happened to this incredibly lucky man in the parable. Oh yeah, he had to buy the field, and yeah, it did cost him everything he had, but this guy knew real treasure when he saw it. And in his opinion, he had gotten that real treasure for nothing. He was under the spout, and God's glory was just gushing out. That's how faith in Jesus works. Jesus says, let go of this life. Let go of everything that it entails. Your job, your home, your family, your friends, your reputation, and your life itself. And I'm going to give you eternal life. Life in all its fullness. Life abundantly. Can you see what a free gift that is, brothers and sisters? Can you see why it's incredibly foolish for us to haggle with God over the terms that Jesus has laid down? Just let go and let God do his incredible work in your life. Is this working your way to heaven? No way! It's not possible to work your way one step closer to heaven. But, and this is an infinitely important but, the everlasting Son of God has come to earth to tell us that giving up everything we have here and now is exactly what he wants us to do in order to be in the right place. To be under the spout where he's giving away for free the most amazing gift in the universe, a thousand times better than life itself, even a thousand times better than the most incredible life that you or I could ever imagine. Now, the churches tell you that if you say a little prayer, you can get eternal life. Do they consider saying the prayer will buy your way to heaven? No, of course not. They say the prayer just puts you in the right place to get the gift. So, obviously, for anyone who's read the Gospels, such a prayer is not the condition that Jesus set for getting the free gift. So it's not going to work. But the idea is the same. Cooperating with the trivial details surrounding this great presentation in no way earns you what is really a free gift. It's just that the free gift is what happens by the wonderful, miraculous grace of God 
when you start cooperating with Jesus and His conditions. Remember, it's only when we follow His conditions that we actually discover the real treasure. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he has found one pearl of great price, he went and he sold all that he had and he bought it. Do you hear what he's saying? Do you hear it, brothers and sisters? Please tell me that you do. It's incredibly simple, but unfortunately, most people never hear it. So if you can hear it right now, know that you can only hear it because God has chosen you. Chosen to give you a chance, a chance to act on it, to sell all that you have in obedience to Him, giving to the poor, and coming to follow Jesus along with others who have done the same thing. Leave everything to follow Jesus right now, today, just as those early disciples did. Please contact me today by writing to avidmoderator1 at gmail.com. That's avidmoderator1, the numeral one and no spaces, at gmail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to keep getting more of these messages from the teachings of Jesus. May God bless you according to his eternal loving will. Amen.